Not watering your Christmas tree is a horrible idea. Inviting someone to church is a wonderful idea. Don't burn down your Christmas tree. Invite someone to church. <laughs> Hello and welcome to church. So good to have you with us this morning. Welcome to Moreland City Salvos Online Church. My name is Andrew and I'm a Wally. Hang on a minute. I think my wife's been playing with the teleprompter. I'm Andrew and I'm one of the, the ministers here along with my wife. And if it's your first time with us today, a really special welcome to you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the little bell, that way you get all the notices. If you're watching on our Church Online channel, now is the time to hit the invite button. It's never been easier to invite someone to church online, so hit the little button and invite someone. And once you're in the church online, don't forget to say hi. We'd love to know that you're there and have a bit of a chat with you. So this week is the second week of our DNA series. We kicked it off last week, hope you were able to join us last week and when we looked at don't uh, and don't forget to download the devotional which is on our website and you can still find it there this week's theme is neutralize and major die is going to take us through neutralize the end out of dna so here we go over to you major die Heavenly 
crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles come breaking out I have the authority Jesus has lovely weather. I even have no jacket today and those who know me, yes, I have no shoes on. I'm preaching with no shoes on. Barefoot preacher here. I love the sun, it's fantastic. I want to talk to you today about a few things. First of all though, I'm going to ask you this question. Have you heard the story of the emperor and his new clothes? Maybe? It's a Hans Christian Andersen classic and if you haven't heard before, here's Die Style. So, there's this emperor who has a love for new clothes. Fair enough, makes sense. He didn't care much for the practical running of the kingdom, he just loved to shop for new threads. And this became famous throughout the land. So seamstress from all over would come and try and sell him the latest looks and latest fabrics and all that comes with fashion. One day, these very gifted, I'm gonna call them con men, came into town and convinced him that they had the latest look. Of course he hired them and paid them a lot of money to make this latest, greatest outfit. And as they were making it, the nervous emperor sends a few of his trusted men in to have a look and check out how they're going. When they get there, they're a little bit baffled by what they found. They couldn't see anything. It, like they couldn't see any fabric, they couldn't see anything. But these were gifted con men. They convinced them that they just couldn't see the fabric, they were just blind to it. Finally, it was finished, this most excellent garment. And it was brought to the emperor. The emperor was a little bit confused because he himself couldn't see anything. But he trusted his men, they went and checked it out. I think he was a little bit insecure and well, let's face it, quite a bit vain. And these con men were able to convince him to wear this invisible suit. Okay, sorry for all the visual people <laughs> today, hold on for the ride. Somehow, not only did they convince him to wear this suit, but to walk through the town and even have servants holding up an invisible train. Basically, the emperor walked through the streets naked. Yeah. I'm just thinking about all the leaders of the world and if we want to see any of them naked, and that's a no from me. But anyway, he's walking through the streets naked and it's not until a child calls out the obvious and says, he's naked that the whole town finally give in to the truth, leaving the emperor exposed on so many levels. And while this is a funny little story, I think it actually has some deep underlying truths in relation to our topic today. Last week, Andrew spoke to you about the D in DNA, which was don't, don't. don't. Today, I get to talk to you about the N, and the N stands for neutralize. We need to neutralize the enemy because the enemy wants to leave us exposed in this world. The enemy can convince us that something is real or true even when it isn't. He can convince us to think and do things just because the people around us think and do things. He can also make us believe things because we trusted someone and because we trusted them and they say it's true, we believe it's true even when it isn't. 
He's like the con men, wanting to rob us of our dignity and divine purpose. And if we're not careful, we end up like the emperor, exposed to the tauntings of the world. We need to neutralise the enemy. Now, according to the, my dictionary that I found, this is the definition of neutralise. It's to make something ineffective by applying the opposite force or effect. So today, I want to suggest that there are three things that I believe if we neutralise, our whole world would change. Now, you might be saying, Di, there's more than three. Sure, there probably is, but these are my top three, and I'm preaching, so here we go. <laughs> the top three. First one, this is no surprise. It's hate. We must neutralise hate. The opposite of hate, not rocket science, people, it's love. In the scripture, it says this, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who Christ Jesus, because through Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. If God doesn't condemn us, then we shouldn't condemn others. Hate needs to be neutralised. And before you start saying, oh, this is one of those sermons again, we're going to talk about love, blah, 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 and you switch off, I want to suggest this. I wonder how many of us need to start neutralising the hate we have for ourselves. Oh, you didn't quite see that one coming, did you? I see your puzzled look and I hear you saying, Di, what are you talking about? Well, let me help you. I've been reading an awesome book and with some awesome women of our tribe. It's called The Brave Way, written by my dear friend, Ellen. And the book helps us confront things that we really need to neutralise in order to have a full life. But there's this one quote that got me right at the beginning of the book. And I want to share it with you today because it's just stuck with me. And I've actually realised how true it is in my life and in other people's lives. And it says this, I've learned that bravery often confronts a bully. But it's not till later that I realised that sometimes the bully that would show up would be within me. An inner voice telling me either that I was not enough or I was too much. Now hold this thought for a moment. That the biggest bully in our lives is within ourselves. And as I move through the job I do and I speak to people, I realise that this is true for so many people because we allow the enemy to take up space in our minds and it goes about bullying us to think that God doesn't love us and that he bullies us into not loving who God created us to be. He starts to make us think we're not enough, we're not worthy, or we're just too much for this world. And we need to neutralise that thinking. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Love is the only way to do this. But how do we learn to love ourselves? Well, let me tell you, the only way that I've learned and the best way is to know how much God loves us. I mean, if the creator of the universe loves me unconditionally, who am I to think of myself any differently? In 1 John says this, that God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world. And this love, not the love not that we are loved by God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atonement for our sacrifice. This is God's love for us. And we ought to love one another as God loves us. I might add, we ought to love ourselves as God loves us. This is love. We struggle with it because we don't understand it in earthly terms. We need to go to eternal thinking to understand it. And Andrew spoke last week about not relying on our own understanding, but relying on God's understanding. And to know his love for us, we have to rely on God's understanding and eternal thinking. We need to neutralise the bully that tries to get us to hate ourselves instead of love ourselves. And here's a truth bomb for you today. Are you ready for it? I find that people who don't love themselves can't love others. We must learn to love ourselves as God loves us, that's when transformation happens. The second is fear. We need to neutralize fear. And I read this quote this week, it says this, when fear knocks, send faith, send faith to answer it. When fear knocks, send faith to answer it. And in Timothy, it says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love and self-discipline. So many of us live in fear. And if 2020 has taught us anything, is that we cannot live in fear. It doesn't mean we go and do stupid things. 
It just means we need to neutralise the fear that prevents us from living a full life. Living in fear leaves us in the control of the enemy because fear will impact our decisions, our outlook and our actions. I want to read you this part of the scripture in Romans. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither present nor past or future powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, that is a big scripture, right? That says if we have confidence in God, in our faith, in the understanding that God is bigger than anything else because nothing can separate us from God, we will live in faith. Fear doesn't stand a chance when we understand this, that God is bigger than anything we face. Many of us lack faith to overcome the things in our lives, so we need to neutralise fear. John 1 says, fear, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. There's that word love again. It appears it can neutralise many things. The third thing I think we need to neutralise is death. Now, Andrew just looked at me strange because he's going, what do you mean death die? Where is this going? Where is it heading? Because when something's dead, it's dead, right? It's just dead. Well, maybe that's not so true. In Ezekiel 37, he talks about a vision God gave him. It's more like a prophetic dream for the Jewish nation. They were in exile, but God wanted them to know that he saw them. And God speaks through this dream saying, he's the way back and he's going to bring them life and he's going to restore them spiritually and physically before God. And it says this, this is uh, Ezekiel speaking. Prophesy to these bones, say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Think about that. The breath of God can bring things back to life. Surely that is a promise for us today as well. Listen to this from John, and it's Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says this, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them, and the Holy Spirit received them. Just think about that. Jesus breathed on the disciples, and the Holy Spirit set upon them. Just as God breathed life into the dry bones, Jesus breathes life into us. There are many areas of our lives that we go, it's just dead. There's no hope. It's too far gone. We can't fix it. But God says, let me breathe. Many of us just hang around death because that's what we think we're worthy of. We, we're not worthy of anything else than this dead life, this dead situation. But God says, let me breathe. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to bring dead people to life. And I want to say to you that, honestly, no pep talk or Bible lesson is going to do that for you. You need the full restoration that can only be found in Jesus. Because the opposite of death is a life breathed through Jesus. Some questions for you today. Have you been listening to a bully? Has the enemy made you think that you are not enough? That you're unworthy of love? Maybe you come from a family that didn't express true love in a way and you don't really know if it exists and that if it did exist that you wouldn't be enough for it. Have people spoken into your life things that are untrue and you've started to believe them which has left you exposed to the world? Or has the enemy made you believe that you're just too much, you're too much drama, you're too much life, you're too much energy, you're too much, you just don't fit into the mould that the world wants you to fit in. So you slowly stop loving yourself. You don't actually know when it started but you just slowly stop loving yourself which in turn prevented you from loving others fully. I hear you asking, how do I know, Di? How do I know that this is how I am? I'm going to ask you these questions. How do you react when someone encourages you? Do you cringe? Do you get defensive? How do you respond when someone compliments you? With doubt and 
feel uncomfortable? What do you do if someone challenges a negative thought you have about yourself? Do you get defensive and start to justify this thought? We can't love others if we hate ourselves. It's just not possible. And let me tell you, there's a very big difference between constructive criticism to help us grow and being a critical person. A critical person hasn't learned how to love themselves. If any of this has hit you somewhere today, I think you need to hear this. You are God's child and he loves you. You are his beloved. Can you honestly today say that you've cast out hate from your heart and you're able to embrace the love that God has for you? We have to neutralize fear and we do it with faith. The enemy wants you to live in fear because he can control you. And I'm finding this year, he's using the media fantastically to spread fear. It's whipped up like a hurricane. But we're not called to live in fear. I ask you these questions. Do you have the courage to try something new? Do you have the faith to let go of something old? Sometimes that's harder, I think. Am I defined by my past rather than my future? Do I see my mistakes more than I see my wins? We are not what we have done or what we struggle with. We are who God says we are. We are his children. And we need to have faith in what he has for us, not fear of what's ahead. Because God wants to breathe life into you. Nothing is too far from God. Now, I know there are people watching and they're saying, you couldn't possibly love me or, or forgive me. I've got nothing to offer. My life is too far gone. Or maybe you're saying, I'm actually quite comfortable with who I am. I just don't need God. Or they could be saying, you don't know my situation. It's too big to overcome. You don't know how bad I was in my past. You don't understand where I've come from. I may as well just accept this life of death that's set before me. And I say, that might be true, I don't understand and I don't know and I don't see, but here's the thing, there are no surprises with God. He sees everything and knows everything. Let me remind you that the scripture says that the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living within you. And it gives life to your mortal bones because his spirit who lives in you. Did you hear that? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. When you accept Jesus into your life, that is the truth. There is nothing, nothing that can't be overcome by God. Just let him breathe into your life. Today, we are gonna neutralize the enemy and we're gonna claim it. Because he has come to seek and destroy. But God says, I've come to bring life and have it to its full. It's your choice what you do today because God's no bully he allows us to choose the ball is in our court we have to want to neutralize the enemy and have no doubt about it there is an enemy there is an enemy the world might be trying to trick us into the fact that there isn't an enemy there's only this God who lets us down all the time but that's not true there is an enemy and there is a God who wants to bring life we must fight hate with love. We must conquer fear with faith. And we need to remove death with the life-giving breath of Jesus. And this is a message we've got to shout from the rooftops because how many people need to know this? There is no revival without personal renewal. I'm going to encourage you to do it today. We're going to stand up. Stand up right where you are now. Come on. Oh, Andrew's been obedient and stand up. We're going to stand up and we're going to claim our lives back in Christ today. We are going to sing or listen to a song and we are going to worship because we are going to affirm that we're going to neutralize the enemy. No longer will he reside in our thoughts. No longer will he be a bully within. No longer will he keep us to live in fear. No longer will he hold us back in our faith. No longer will we live in death. We are going to raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies. Don't be fooled. He's around. 
He wants, to live, wants us to live in fear and faith and death, but God is bigger and he has a victory. So right now, we're going to allow God to breathe life into our lives again. And we're going to allow ourselves to live in love, faith and life. So let's claim that today during this song. God gave us this song early on in the year, Andrew and I, and we've honestly held on to it all of 2020. We're going to raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies. Louder than our unbelief. Our weapon is our melody and heaven will come and fight for me. And when we get to this part that I'm going to read now, when we get to this part, I expect to hear you from my house. I expect to hear all of Moreland City screaming from the tuck of their lungs this today. Up from the ashes, hope will arrive. That is what is going to happen today in the presence of God. We're going to proclaim it all over the city, all over the land. But first of all, in our own lives. Let's sing this song together. Up from the ashes, hope has arrived. Death is defeated. The king is alive.
that's so good. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. So good. And so good from Major Die. What a powerful word. I hope you can claim the victory today and neutralize the enemy. If you would like to re-watch today's service, head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe to the Moreland City Salvos channel. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram for up-to-date info during the week. There is always something going on. If you would like to support the ongoing work of our ministry here and in our community, uh, then please head to our website for more details on how you can give or just copy the details that are going to come up on your screen. There is still time to download the devotional DNA and it will be on our website ready for you to access. Thanks for joining us and see you next week, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Have a great week. Bye for now. God bless. Hey, there's something missing. We're at the hangout, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's something What's missing. Missing. I don't know. I got Coda here. You got Coda. I got Die. But it's people. We're missing people. We're missing you. We're missing you. Come on. You're killing us. How can they get here? How can they get here, Jake? Click on the link. If you're watching them church online, click on the link and you can jump straight in. Otherwise, go to our website and click on the link there or just type in bit.ly forward slash salvo hangout and you can come join us. Follow that link. We're here. We're waiting for you. See you soon. See you soon. See you soon.